Hello everyone, this is Bowman. Welcome back to episode 9 of this Let's Play the Sacred Tools mod. And this is also going to be the final episode for now. Why for now? Because the Sacred Tools creator is working on a somewhat big update which will change and add a lot of things. He likes to take his time to make things right and good, which I'm completely fine with. So it might take a while until this update comes out and we will start something else in the meantime. But well, what I'm basically trying to say is we will come back to the series once the update is out. Now let's actually get going and craft the infinite recall potion from the Louis AFK mod, as suggested by Nick Janik. Janik? Yes. He mentions that there is a twist to that item, which is that you can recall back to the last location you used recall. And yup, that's really useful. And I could have made this a long time ago. And yeah, 30 recall potions and you can make one yourself. And it's definitely more useful than a magic mirror. So now we have to bind keys to the Louis AFK recall and recall back. Yeah, I guess that'll do. And yup, it works just like you would imagine. And yeah, the Louis FK mod is just filled with useful and convenient stuff. Ranging from, oh, that's neat to have, to, yep, that's completely overpowered. And in case you want to learn more about the Louis FK mod, which I would personally recommend to everyone playing modded, then you can check out my video I did on it. I saw the opportunity for a shameless self plug and I took it. Also, last time I was like, oh, damn it, the Quasar wings don't fit this armor anymore. Did you even consider using dice, Baumi? No, cause you're stupid. So thanks to Vixen, we shall try to save the situation with dice. I hope that either red, orange or yellow make the wings fit our armor. Ooh, red looks very promising. It doesn't fit 100%, but I could live with that. Yellow is definitely a no-no, so maybe orange is the perfect fit. Um, color-wise, it seems to fit the most, but I kinda like the red version more. Yeah, let's go with red. Also, before we dive back into sacred tool stuff, I wanna show you guys one more thing from the Louis AFK mod. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the plant harvester. I tried to explain what it does, but I suck at explaining, so let's just read the tooltip. It collects and replants nearby blooming plants within 50 tiles each direction. Now, how cool is that? I would say it's at least four cool. Maybe five. But Baumi, why don't you just get the alchemist mod? You can just buy potion stand. Yeah, you're right, but I don't know. For some reason I actually enjoy crafting potions myself. And this over here is the same thing, but with trees. Ah, oh, that's so cool. I don't know why I think it's so cool, but it's just so cool, okay? Oh nice, a tree spawn just then. So let's see this thing in action. And there we go, we got 20 more Ebonwood and a new tree has been planted. Alright, but let's get finally back to the Sacred Tools mod. So the only big thing left for us to do is to fight the challenger. But to be able to even start the fight with him, we have to get a challenge medal first. Therefore, we have to farm a certain type of enemy here, which I hope will spawn soon so that I can show it to you. And yes, I dug out a huge area here to make farming a lot easier. Actually, I got a lot of the material we need by just building this. So now that this is done, I actually don't need to farm here anymore. Awesome, right? <laughs> hey, there he is! The eroded winged Furia, 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 whatever. And he got 80,000 health and a super devastating attack. 300 life gone just like that. So this dude is definitely not someone to mess around with. But I said it once and I will say it again. I like the idea of powerful non-boss enemies. And he drops astral tight shards. Is it astral tight or astral tight? Hmm, questions I don't know the answers to. But I do know that we need these shards to make the challenge medal. And I will say one thing right away. The challenger will be removed in the next update, or replaced, well one or the other. So knowing that, it gives this probably last episode a weird feel. And I was thinking about this for quite a while, if we should fight him or just ignore him, since he will be removed anyway. But yeah, I came to the conclusion that it's better to just check him out, and then we can see for ourselves if the removal of the challenger is a good idea 
or not. Before we fight the challenger though, I have one more thing to do. But before we can do that thing, we have to kick Aragor's butt one last time. And it will be super satisfying to destroy this douche with our new crazy good weapon. I actually thought it would be a lot easier than that. I thought we would do tons more damage and such. But I guess that's not the case and now I actually have to look out to not die. <sighs> I said it once and I'll say it again. Stupid Aragor. Come on, 400 life left. There we go, nice. Perfect, we got more vials of fiery. And we need that to craft more Draconium Alloy, which we then need to craft Moon Emblems. Why? Because, well, to fight more bosses. We have to kill the Lunarians again, since a lot of you guys said that they would drop an awesome throwing weapon. Last time we got a summoner weapon, so it's fair to assume that they drop a really good weapon for each class, right? So let's see what we get. Oh my god, the damage, yes! On our first kill in the last episode, I needed a really long time to get through these guys. And now, now we are completely destroying them. Alright, let's see if Nabaniel is also that easy to kill now. Um, so far it doesn't seem like it. He is really hard to catch. Okay, yep, once he actually stays on screen, he gets destroyed as well. I mean, we are not destroying him, but it's significantly easier and faster now. And there we go. Hey, hey, stop it! You're dead! Get your balls out of my face! That was an unfortunate choice of words. A different design for a trophy. I like it. It's a welcome change. Boop! And we got a new weapon. Asteroid Shower. A melee weapon. Light the way to our future. Alright, let's check it. What was that? I know I say, oh, this is so cool way too often, but this, this, this is really cool. It's probably seven cool. And that's a lot of cool. I don't give out seven cools this often, okay? Now, it's probably not the most effective weapon ever, just judging by the looks of it, but who knows? Anyways, let's take on the next round of destroying the Lunarians and hope for a new weapon. Preferably a throwing one. I'm also really enjoying the soundtrack of this boss. It's gotta be my favorite one from this mod. Alright, let's see what we get this time. <gasps> the boss almost killed me! Holy crap! <laughs> and <gasps> we got it! We actually got it! Nice! Blind Justice, 660 throwing damage. Uh, doesn't sound too much, but okay. Very fast speed, it's still a material. May you bring peace to this hateful world. Wait, this world is hateful? Hmm. Hitting enemies will send cosmic flares after them. Oh yeah, people said it would be a better quantum breaker. And now I can see why. I mean, both weapons are boomerang type weapons. So yeah, that's what they have in common. Okay, it can be upgraded to the Awakened Justice. Ascension tablet. How do we get that? Relic fragments. Well, maybe we get that by killing the challenger? Yeah, that's probably it. Oh great, the decorationist has a new painting now. Another Twitch thingy. Which I don't know the meaning of since I very rarely watch live streams. Yay me! Um... Hmm... Glad we did that. Alright, let's get finally to it. Let's make some challenge medals and take on the challenger. Now, again, I want you guys to keep in mind that this boss is about to get removed in the next update. The creator said to me he doesn't like him, he, he was being rushed from a programming standpoint of course, and he just wants him removed. And I don't think it's going to be that bad, so let's just see now. So we got a humanoid boss, which the idea of it is actually cool and I like that. Um, yeah, he is off screen most of the time, which is kind of annoying. But Aragor is actually kind of the same. The music is really good again. I will definitely put up the artist and the name of the song. I usually do that when starting the cinematic look for a boss fight. But I think we will not get a cinematic fight out of this one. So I don't really take too much damage, but I also can't really deal any damage. Um, well maybe we have to try and chase him a little bit. Oh, 
I needed my rebirth just then. I gotta be more careful. He can do quite a bit of damage if he actually hits me. And that's probably it? Yep, it is. Nice. And he turned into a town NPC again. That's kind of funny. I suggest you fight fair or else I will have to hit extra hard. Yeah, some of you guys told me that when you do too much damage, he goes like insane mode or something. And he will probably just kill you then. Anyways, treasure pack time. As for type plating, awesome, we need that stuff to buy stuff from the challenger. And that's not the expert item. Seems like he doesn't have one. Arcanum of the caster, you sacrifice everything to keep your magic powerful. Using mana potions will apply caster sacrifice instead of mana sickness. Caster sacrifice will double mana usage, automatically uses mana potions. That's interesting. So instead of a damage decrease, you have to chuck twice the amount of mana potions. Yeah, I would definitely take that. With the asphaltite plating we got, we cannot really afford anything. Nothing cool at least. So no armor and no weapons. We could get asphaltite healing elixirs. Restores 400 life, which is quite a lot. And they only cost one plating, but... Well, we don't really need them. I wonder what the Astrothite energy movement gear is. I'll keep this one in mind. First, I want to save up for the throwing weapons, which cost 65 platings each. So here we go again. Nice, yeah, let's, let's just walk right through the boss by me. Well done. Um, but yeah, uh, farming the challenger shouldn't be that big of a deal, right? I mean, it will just take a little bit of time to kill him every time. Nice, another one down. Oh sweet, we got 55 platings this time. That's pretty good. So now we got 98 in total, which is definitely enough to buy a weapon. So let's do that. Getting the Asphaltite knife sounds like a good choice to me. 565 damage, very fast speed, throws a random amount of homing daggers, which could be incredibly useful for farming the challenger. Let's see if we get a better prefix on this one. 70 gold to reforge. Well, <laughs> I'll take it. I never properly tried out the blind justice, so let's do that now. It already looks like it would do tons of damage. We will see in a second. Oh yes, that is some very nice damage. But it's not homing. At least not the projectile that I shoot. And that could actually make it less effective than the orbital destruction. But when you actually manage to hit this bastard, then it's definitely better than the orbital destruction. But yeah, you are more likely to hit him with the Orbital Destruction, so I guess in this fight both weapons are equally good. Both have their advantages and disadvantages. Alright, sweet! And it definitely took me longer to kill him with the Blind Justice. Just saying. <laughs> we need more platings. Get ready for the next round, Challenger Boy! And this time we will check out the Astral Fight Knights. Oh damn! They are doing really well! Nice! Well, this felt like uh, these knives killed him twice as fast as the Blind Justice did. And that's pretty impressive. Alright, let's do this one more time. Then we definitely got enough platings to buy the whole armor. Nice, another challenger has been defeated. Actually, let's see how much damage these guys do. Uh, not too much. I don't know why I'm disappointed by that. <laughs> oh, we only have 179 platings. I'm pretty sure each piece of the armor costs 80 platings. So let's fight him again. Ah, oh, come on, 227 platings. We need 13 more. So we gotta fight him again. This battle has now turned into a catch me if you can kind of thing. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I blame it on the pirates. And with this, we should have enough platings now. So let's finally go and get the armor. Wait a minute. The breastplate and the leggings don't cost 80 platings. Well, 
I guess we need the platings for more stuff anyway. So here we go now. And of course we are going for the throwing hat piece. The asphaltite cowl. Then the asphaltite breastplate. And the asphaltite ropes. Okay, sweeto. The armor set looks alright. It's nothing too special. The particles coming off are pretty cool though. Look at me guys. For the first time, I'm actually using the scaling feature. Aren't you guys proud of me? I actually keep forgetting that this is a thing in the game now. So our new armor gives us 119 defense. With the flarium armor we had 95. So that's quite an increase in defense. Nice. 936 damage, 37% crit chance. With the flarium armor we had 889 damage and 37% crit chance. So we also got a little bit more damage now. Alright, but let's take a closer look at the armor now. Asylthite Cowl, 44 defense, 55% increased throne damage, plus 30 health, 50% increased throwing velocity, 50% chance to not consume thrown items. Step bonus, press this button to deploy one of four spells. Press that button to cycle between the spells. Deploying a spell will initiate a cooldown of one minute. What? I have no idea what this is about, but it sounds awesome and we will find out in just a second. Astral type breastplate, 40 defense, 8% increased life regen, plus 50 health. And astral type probes, probes? <laughs> and astral type ropes, 25 defense, 65% increased movement speed and plus 30 health again. We still have some platings left over because... I'm stupid and that's okay and we all know that, so <laughs> let's just get the wings. Just for aesthetic reasons. And yeah, they look really nice. Especially the animation. Nicely done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I almost forgot to check out the set bonus of our new armor. Derp ability key. Uh, we will set that to R. And since I don't think it matters too much, uh, we will set the cycle spell key to P. Alright, so that's the cycling through the spells thingy. Now, um, I have no idea what the spells do, so let's just try, I guess. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't seem to damage enemies, though. Uh, I'm very confused. And now I have to wait one minute to check out the next spell. It would be nice to have, like, a deeper thingy going on to be able to tell when you can use the spell again. What? Was that the indication for uh, being able to use your spell again? Yep, I guess so. So what does this one do? Uh, I should probably stop wasting everyone's time and just look this up on the wiki. Alright, now listen up kids. I have the wiki page open here and I will hit you with some knowledge now. This one is Doem. Dome? Doem? I don't know. But it's a spell which creates a sigil that makes enemies take twice as much damage if they are within the sigil. This one is theirs. It's a spell which creates a shield providing players inside the shield with 40 more defense and 20% increased damage reduction. This one is Baru, which I consider the most useful one since it got a lifesteal effect. And it says on the page that it lasts for 20 seconds. And the final one is May. May? <laughs> or something? Um, it's a spell which summons a barrage of soul burn inflicting blades with one final blade that creates smaller soul burn inflicting blades to travel across the surf to travel across surfaces. Damn, that's one confusing description here. Uh, let's just check it out. All right, here we go. That was really cool. That was really cool. I doubt that it's effective, but it's really cool. And I like cool stuff, as you may know by now. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot going on with this armor. Uh, you can tell that a lot of thoughts and creativity went into making this one. Even though only one of those four spells seems to be useful to me. And of course, it's the lifesteal one. But I might be very wrong about this statement, as I'm usually wrong about stuff. Okay, another challenger down. So now we should have enough platings to check out the Astral Thide Energy Movement Gear. I'm really curious what this one does. Wait, is it? It's a grappling hook, everybody! Hooray! <laughs> the people over at Secret Tools be like, 
Hey guys, what about an Azure Thigh Grappling Hook? And let's call it Energy Movement Gear! I feel clickbaited. Let's also get the music box, cause why not? I have the money, so let me flex a little bit on you haters, okay? Ooh, that's really cool. I also got some Azure Thigh blocks, and they seem to be really nice. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, really? Why would you make these so hard to break? I don't understand. And yeah, there is also a whole furniture set. Man, I, I really want to build something now, but I also want to wrap up this episode. Really? Really? I can't even break it with this pickaxe? Oh, I have to get this pickaxe, huh? <sighs> you, you can't see it, but I'm shaking my head in disappointment right now. Fine! Let's get the platings to buy this pickaxe. Hooray! I can break it now! Aren't you guys excited about this as well? <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't contain myself either. Alright, there is one more thing to do. And that is to get enough platings for the other throwing weapon he sells. Astrothite Saber. Nice, thank you. Whoa! This one got some crazy speed on it. I wonder how effective it is in combat though. Well, this weapon is definitely not as effective as all the other weapons we had a look at today. So, nice try Azothite Saber. I'm going back to my knives. You know what? You will not be missed, Challenger! Stupid Challenger. Oh man! I completely forgot about making the Awakened Justice. But the Challenger doesn't sell these tablets, nor does he drop them, so... What the f... Okay, I quickly asked Dan, the creator of the mod, how to get ascension tablets. And he said that the challenger drops relic fragments at a 12.5% chance. So that's bad news actually. So I will spend a few hours grinding off camera, since I don't have any more materials to craft more challenge medals to fight the challenger. So yeah, be right back I guess. Hey, a couple days have passed since I last recorded something for this video. Uh, I spent some hours farming the eroded winged farriers to get their shards. Uh, no big deal honestly, I watched TV while farming so it wasn't that boring. And yeah, I ended up with 350 astrothite shards, which will be enough to make 35 challenge medals. And we also already have 12 challenge medal in our inventory. So. I think we are good to go to get at least one ascension tablet. Also, don't mind the background music. I just love this soundtrack so much that I actually placed a music box of that song somewhere in the base. Alright, but let's start farming the boss now. And don't worry, I will skip through most of it of course. Uh, let's say we kill 5 challengers and then we open those 5 treasure bags at once on camera. Alright, sweet! And this is the 5th challenger defeated. And we got 5 treasure bags now. Wait a minute. Did we really just get... Yup! Out of the first bag, we got 6 relic fragments already! That's awesome! And since we have so many spare platings now, I'll just go ahead and buy a lot of these super crazy healing potions. On the sacred tools wiki, it says that you only get 2 to 4 fragments if you drop them. So, I guess that has been changed? Yay! <laughs> so, we probably have to get somewhat lucky only one more time. Whoops. Wait, why did we not rebirth? Oh, right. We don't have the flare him armor anymore. <laughs> um, my bad. Okay, let's just keep on farming. Wait. <gasps> no, 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 no! He's enraged now. Did we really do so much damage? Oh, and he's draining my life now. Isn't that just great? Well, I guess we also covered his cheat protection then. 
I think it acts a little bit like a cheap protection anyway. Yeah, I did some reforging. I got godly astrothite knives now, and I also made all my accessories either lucky or menacing. And I guess that was just enough to make the challenger go all bananas-like. Alright, another 5 challengers defeated. Let's see if we are lucky enough to get more relic fragments. Well, I guess that's a no. Okay, we got 5 treasure packs yet again. Come on, big money, big money! Yes! Yes! We got another 6 fragments. Sweet dude! Oh, I almost forgot about this. Almost, but I didn't. Uh, before we upgrade our blind justice, let's make the final version of the Pendulera first. So here we go, the true moon edge Pendulera. The final version of this weapon. You need 40 Quasar fragments, the moon edge Pendulera, 20 luminous energy and 20 crystalline bars. Oh, nice! And I bet they're homing now, yes! <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I kinda wanna see now how this weapon does against the challenger. Now, I don't really have a melee setup and I won't bother to make one, but at the very least, I will buy the melee headpiece of this armor. And let's also do a little bit of reforging here. Uh, okay, I will go with Godly. It's just too damn expensive to try to go for legendary. Yeah, that's decent damage. Considering I don't have a proper melee setup. And this weapon is the same tier as the Orbital Destruction, by the way. And I like both weapons a lot. And you know what, since we are already looking at some melee stuff here, let's also check out the Azothite melee weapons. Huh, he sells 3 melee weapons, but only 2 throwing weapons. Kinda rude. Alright, so this is the Beam Partisan. And it looks Pretty awesome and it feels really powerful. This be the Astrothite Blade. And I like the speed on it, but I don't think the projectiles are homing. Or are they? Nope, doesn't seem like it. Alright, the third and final weapon is the Face Slash. And yeah, I mean, it's that type of weapon. Now, let's finally craft the thing. Let's get the Ascension Tablet, and as we know already, you need 10 Relic Fragments to craft that. And with the Ascension Tablet, we can now upgrade the Blind Justice to the Awakened Justice. Over a thousand throwing damage, very fast speed. Even if in the end I cause my own destruction, I will not give up. Dude, that's some deep stuff. Hitting enemies will send Astral Flares after them. Alright. Thank you very much! That's it guys, let's have one last fight against the challenger. The final fight if you want. The Unreal Awakened Justice versus the challenger. Now that's a lot of damage! Okay, that's too much damage actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess this was not the epic finale we all were hoping for. Well, let's just destroy the Lunarians then. Yep, I approve of the crazy overpoweredness of this weapon. Alright, so yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. And hopefully not quite it for this series. Was that a proper English sentence? Probably not. Anyway, let's completely obliterate Novani really fast. Nice. Okay, so I will not give my final opinion about this mod just yet. I will definitely wait for at least the next update and cover that. And then we will see what happens to the challenger, if he's going to be completely removed or just changed, uh, replaced, whatever. Uh, I'm just really excited to see what is next for this mod. So since this is not the final episode yet, I will just stop speaking words with my mouth hole now and instead I just hope that you have enjoyed watching me derping around. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, have a sweet day and stay awesome!